Okay, we're back live inside theCUBE. This is day two of uh, Hortonworks show with Yahoo, uh, Hadoop uh, Summit 2012. I'm John Furrier, I'm joined with Jeff Kelly. Uh, this is the day two kickoff. We're looking forward to great, uh, great conversations, full packed schedule here inside SiliconAngle.tv's CUBE. This is our flagship telecast when we go out to the event, uh, extract a signal from the noise. Boy, we had a big day yesterday, Jeff. A um, sure lot did. of people, it was an event going on after at the Tech Museum mm -hmm. uh, in, in San Jose. Got a lot of good stories out of the evening. Um, what's your take on uh, your expectations for today? Uh, well, I think you know, we're going to continue to hear the themes we heard yesterday kind of uh, continue today. And that, that is a lot around Hadoop. Is it enterprise ready? How do you integrate it with existing systems to not just uh, complement, but really extract more value from the, the IT systems, the databases, and software you've already invested in over the years? Um, you know, we're going to hear more about the ecosystem. Uh, there's a lot of different vendors here of all types. There's, you know, the open source uh, startups, uh, you know, the hot startups, and then there's, you know, long time IT vendors like IBM and others here. So uh, how they're all kind of working together, and that's all shaking out now. Uh, that's really an interesting story. And then of course, you know, the uh, you know Hortonworks is here uh, putting on this show, and they're uh, just released their uh, GA of their platform. Uh, and their whole business model, uh, we talked about with Rod Beard and the CEO yesterday, uh, about uh, you know, keeping the product itself open source and free and uh, selling uh, support. So uh, that's certainly going to be something we'll hear more about today when we talk to some of the Hortonworks guys. Uh, and finally, use cases. So hopefully get on some more practitioners today. In fact, hopefully we will get on some more practitioners today. Netflix, among others. PayPal coming on, so we'd love to hear a little bit more about how they're actually using the technology inside their organizations and advice they might have for uh, practitioners out there that are watching, that are you know want to get involved, want to start working with big data, uh, so we should have some good advice and some good examples there. The um, the the big story we're going to have on this morning is that uh, Jeffrey Moore, who wrote the book Crossing the Chasm, he also wrote the famous book Inside the Tornado. I just see him here coming on the cube. Uh, it'd be great to talk to him because he just gave a keynote presentation talking about the the markets and you know early market. Bowling alley, which when you start seeing use cases, the tornado, and then full adoption. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk to him about that and kind of get his take on where we're at. But he really thinks that we're we're still in the early stages of this market, uh, and kind of transitioning over to that bowling alley, what he calls stage, mm -hmm. where the use cases are are being the key conversations, not so much standards and and product scale, um, which I would agree with. I want to get his take on that, but. You know, all that's going on, Jeff, but the marketplace is exploding. Obviously, mm -hmm. with big data, you're seeing a massive growth. Um, the news out there in the web today is that Microsoft is going to acquire Yammer for over a billion dollars. I was breaking on the news uh, today. Um, you've got Jive out there, still public, just went public. LinkedIn went public. So these social stocks are absolutely going crazy. Um, Yammer basically makes Facebook for the enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just amazing how how that's going now, you look at uh, Salesforce, right? Salesforce and Oracle have been buying up these little social media companies. Oracle just bought, uh, I mean Salesforce just bought Buddy Media, uh, and Oracle bought a few little companies as well. So you're seeing the marketplace looking at new infrastructure-like solutions. So, you know, my take on this show, we're going to continue to see in the conversation today, two threads of conversations. One about infrastructure, and one about applications and analytics. So the end game is the analytics, uh, the application with big data, but ultimately there's a lot of action going on at the infrastructure level. So mm -hmm. all this enterprise ready stuff is all kind of posturing in my opinion, but it's good posturing. That's the, where people have to be immediately. That's like the first you know, milestone for a lot of these big data companies, Jeff, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So you know, a lot of activity. So a lot of things going on. The bombs are dropping in the marketplace. Uh, Yammer going to sell to uh, Microsoft. Microsoft going to buy them for a billion dollars. It's insane, mm -hmm. the, uh, insane the, the valuation of these companies. You know, and, and we've been talking about Cloudera uh, and Hortonworks. We're going to continue to talk about that today. The uh, so-called Cold War is over between the two companies. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, you have two different companies, two different approaches. Mm -hmm. Cloudera, obviously the market leader. Okay, you've documented that very yeah. clearly. Hortonworks, a number two, rapidly trying to get that mm -hmm. position. Uh, but two different business model approaches. Right. 
um, and two different philosophies, and also I might add two different valuations. I mean, Cloudera's valuation, some are saying, is approaching a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Hortonworks' last round of financing was rumored to be around 400 million. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it's, there it is. It's still early, you know? early times, though, and uh, you know, I think it's important. And you, we were talking uh, before we went on air a little bit about, you know, the the, the Cold War is over. There, you know, there's a lot of co-opetition. They're working a lot of uh, on the engineering level, working together as part of the open source uh, community. But yeah, I, I I agree with you. Make no mistake. You know, this is a um, you know these are competitive uh, companies. They're both trying to win this market. It's a you know potentially a hundred billion plus market. So uh, you know we're not talking about small dollars here. So there is, you know, there's a lot at stake, and I think they are playing well together when it comes to the, um, you know, on the ground, the engineers, the, uh, you know, contributing to the uh, Apache Hadoop, but, you know, uh, let's not forget, there's a lot of, a lot of money at stake here, and, uh, you know, they both want to be the, uh, you know, the top Hadoop player in the market. We're also seeing another theme we're going to drill down today is um, dealing with unstructured and structured data. We're going to have Datamir on, we're going to have a bunch of other companies, we have some, uh, a lot of more Hortonworks guys on, because, mm -hmm. you know, the real talk is analytics. Um, what's your take on the analytics side? Because obviously, you know, analytics is really important. This visualization of, mm -hmm. of data is actually getting the analytics out of the databases. What's your take on that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, what we're seeing is the kind of the more traditional BI players are starting to, uh, you know, everyone's releasing kind of some kind of connector to Hive. Um, you know, say, hey, you can bring data right into business objects or uh, Cognos, whatever it might be. Uh, on the other hand, we've also got some kind of Hadoop-focused startups like Datamir, which are doing some really interesting things. Uh, and I think actually, Datamir, I'm really uh, interested to talk to today because they've just released uh, the second version of their platform, um, and it adds some uh, collaboration capabilities as well, which I think is really important when you're talking about analyzing data. But uh, to your question, uh, you know, when you're when you're trying to uh, bring big data to the masses, part of that is bringing tools that customers or that uh, should say users are comfortable with. That means Excel. That means spreadsheets. Uh, and easy to use tools to visualize data, and that's just what Datamir is trying to do. Um, you know, we've also got some you know non Hadoop specific companies like Tableau, uh, very well known of course, uh, for their data uh, visualization technology, very popular with kind of the data science community. Um, you know, but there's always issues around scaling uh, when you're talking about moving data out of Hadoop into a visualization tool versus a tool or a technology that kind of lives inside the platform, which is the Datamir approach. What are you thinking about? Uh, what do you hear about? Um some of the different competing approaches around the business model. We had Cassandra on Guys Data Stacks. Mm -hmm. Obviously there, you know, Cassandra has been kind of positioned as more of a narrow uh, approach. Obviously Hadoop's got the big stage. What about other solutions like MongoDB? What are you hearing mm -hmm. there? Uh, well, I, well, you know, I, I've spoken with a few Mongo users and what I'm hearing is, you know, Mongo is, is I think someone, we, we talked about this on theCUBE yesterday as well, is it's not necessarily a, um, for huge data volumes. We're not talking about uh, Hadoop level uh, petabytes of data. Mongo is a, is a database that's good for um, uh, media type uh, data, media type files, as well as um, you know, video, audio, uh, but at, at a bit smaller scale. Um, so you know, we're hearing a bit about Mongo, uh, not as much, uh, frankly, as we heard maybe six months ago. Um, I think the conversation has very much uh, moved from some of those other competing NoSQL databases, it's m focusing much more on Hadoop now. Um, you know, why is that? Partly, you know, partly because, you know, there's, Hadoop is rapidly developing and, uh, you know, there are more and more use cases it's, it's applicable to. Um, but, you know, of course, there's also, you know, the, the marketing muscle behind some of these bigger companies, like bigger in the, in, in the sense in the open source world, like Cloudera and Hortonworks versus uh, some of the smaller uh, companies that are trying to commercialize the NoSQL databases. Okay, you're watching SiliconANGLE.TV's exclusive and continuous coverage of Hadoop World 20, 12, we're here inside theCUBE. This is our anchor desk format. We go out to the events. We call it the ESPN of tech. We'd love to go out and, and um, get the data. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna fish this uh, story, all the stories out of this event. Um, we'd like to bring this uh, social TV to you. And we want to thank our sponsors. We would not be here doing our independent coverage and commentary and analysis with our great guests and sharing that uh, signal with you. It wasn't for a few firms who have been supporting us. I want to say Cloudera has been amazing to work with. They supported us for over a year. Um, they love to bring this format out there. We've had Lucid Imagination. We've had uh, MapR. Um, Hortonworks, um, uh, data stacks, data stacks, um, sync sort. Let's not forget. As and well. because of their investment and their underwriting of our amazing programming, we are now expanding our footprint. We have a Studio B option now uh, for Burst Media, which Fred Davis is uh, heading up. 
and uh, Studio B is our side profile, and, and all the dollars go into programming. So, you know, we get underwriting support, we maintain our independence, we want to bring you the best stories, we're expanding, and we're looking forward to launching our 24-7 channel in September. Um, so keep, keep watching siliconangle.tv. But today, we're going to just continue to talk about the Cloudera, the Hortonworks guys, we're going to get on. Mm -hmm. um, I think that story is pretty much a, a dead horse at this point. We've beaten that up. But we want to find more about the products, where it's going. We want to share with you commentary around what we think the top players are doing and be the reference point for this, for this uh, ecosystem. So, uh, I'm John Furrier, keep watching. We'll be right back with our next guest, Jeffrey Moore, author of Crossing the Chasm and Keynote Speakers. So we'll be right back with Jeffrey Moore right after this break. <laughs>